my pleasure to introduce the next session. So we will now, oh, too many microphones. We will now have a laureate discussion on the topic, why do so many people hate mathematics? Uh, and this will be moderated by Vicky Hansen. Let me introduce Vicky Hansen first. She is the CEO of the ACM, of the Association for Computing Machinery. And let me quote from her homepage, let me maybe not hiding. Um, Vicky Hansen has been working on issues of inclusion for older adults and disabled people throughout her career. First as a postdoctoral fellow at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies and later at the IBM Research Division and then as a professor at the University of Dundee in Scotland and the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. She has received many, many honors and awards, too many for me to list, but let me just say that she is a fellow of the ACM of the British uh, Computer Society, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, and um, was elected to the ACM CHI Academy, and most recently, in 2020, she was elected member of the National Academy of Engineering for her contributions to accessible systems design and leadership in the computer science community. It's my pleasure to welcome Vicky Hansen on the stage, and she will introduce the other panelists. Do you want to say? Are you going to introduce the others, or do you want me to do? Introduce okay. the others, but. Uh, Okay, I'm happy to introduce the others. Um, so, well, first you see that Laszlo is back again with us. Um, so he received the 2021 Abel Prize, you remember from the last session. Okay, the other panelists we have, we have Bob Tarjan. Um, Bob, if you wanna come over. Um, Bob is a dual threat here. Uh, we have laureates from both um, mathematics and computing, and he actually, won his awards for both mathematics and computing. He won the Nevolina Prize in 1982 and uh, the Turing Award in 1986. We're figuring out what to do here. <laughs> and next to me, um, a person you've already seen earlier this week, Yael Talman Kalai and she's the recipient of the 2022 ACM Prize in Computing. Thank you. And rounding out this group, we have Hugo Dominique Copé. I, I have no ability in French whatsoever, so do you want to say your name and get it? <laughs> Pardon? I don't have any ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. We're, we're going to do very well here. <laughs> you Duminil just want to re-say your name, though, so people recognize who you are. Hugo Duminil Copa. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a prize for that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, first question. I'm going to go to Laszlo. Um, because you are the person who suggested the title for this panel. And um, you already heard a bit of a chuckle when they said something about why do people, uh, so many people hate mathematics. In this group where we have uh, several hundred mathematicians and computing scientists, it may seem like a, a bit of an odd title. So um, what were you hoping to get out of this session when you suggested the title? <laughs> I, uh... I think that uh, that many of us who had uh, were interviewed, for example, for different uh, non-mathematical periodicals or journals or uh, newspapers, uh, the re reporter started the interview with saying, well, I have always hated mathematics, but, uh, but. And uh, so I think that's a common experience of many of us. Uh, uh, maybe, well, uh, maybe, I, I mean, I, I, I have asked around why is that. I don't think I have the answer, but maybe somebody else does. So, so hopefully we'll get the answer today, right, in the next 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Bob, there you are. Yeah. So when you got the title for this panel, you suggested an alternate, a slight variation of the title. You said, why do so many people fear mathematics? 
So can you say a little bit about the contrast that you see between hating math and fearing math? I, th I, I think the hatred comes from the fear, actually. I think the fear comes first. And I, I have to say I have more questions than answers. Maybe we can collectively come to some answers. But uh, hating and fearing mathematics was certainly not my young experience. I had the same kind of uh, upbringing in the mathematical sense that Lotzi did. I had an incredible eighth and ninth grade math instructor who, who taught us piano axioms. This was before the days of the new math, if anybody knows about new math. And, uh, we were not doing arithmetic, we were uh, proving theorems about arithmetic, and to some of us, namely to me, this was just a fabulous, eye-opening experience. So it's, it's a mystery, and, and I'm, it, everybody in this room is very special and gifted in mathematics and computer science, but I am curious, just to see maybe a show of hands, how many of you at some point in your educational career or in your life hated or feared mathematics? Anybody? Anybody? Geometry was my bugaboo, too, actually, I have to say. Some things that seem impossible become easy once you study them. So they were impossible and they became obvious. So I feared it, and then I did. That's why I kept trying to find So even in this group, we have people who hated and or feared math, yeah. I think all of us... Uh, <laughs> fear things we don't understand or things we can't do. And if you have someone who uh, challenges you without criticizing you, that's part of the way toward a solution, perhaps. But one of the things that's often talked about is that, this is a question for Hugo. Uh, <laughs> so one of the things that's often talked about is people don't see the relevance of math for their lives. It's too abstract. Um, do you have an answer for these people? And in particular, I mean, what are people missing out on in their lives when they don't pay more attention to mathematics? I think it's, it's kind of, it's not only people's fault. I think the way we are talking about math is systematically focusing on its applications. But at the end, you know, you don't convince a 10 year old to learn something just because it's useful. The person is going to learn it because it enjoys learning it. As you said, this fear, I agree that we are all a little bit afraid of what we don't know, but we are also curious about trying to discover the thing. And I think that by repeatedly telling people, no, but come on, I mean, like math, you know, it's useful. We are actually making the wrong move. That's my feeling. So we should stop focusing on the applications, which at the end, are basically something which is relevant for the happy few that don't have the problem of hating math and focusing more on just the fact that it's a very interesting learning process that can be applied directly to other things to learn and that this should be uh, the focus of our, uh, our brain and our uh, speeches is to actually convince people that it's just enjoyable to learn. It's enjoyable to learn. It's actually useful in many aspects of daily lives, which people don't realize, and potentially useful in careers, too, which maybe they aren't understanding the foundations always of other careers. I agree that it's very useful, but at least, I mean, of course, I have less experience than many people here about talking to the media, but I, I had a crash, like I'm catching up, I can tell you that. <laughs> and, and, and in this year, I noticed that basically telling people it's useful is something that is useless. I mean, just the, it doesn't speak to people, basically. That's my feeling. When you start talking about emotions, when you start saying that exactly this fear, I mean, you know, to be pr proud is one very important emotion for learning in general, being proud of you. And you are proud if you go, I mean, if you deserve it in some sense, right? It's exactly the fact of passing from not understanding, like, basically suffering, maybe suffering is maybe not the right term, but I mean, having difficulties understanding something and then understanding, then you are proud of yourself and you are going to reproduce this experience. When you start talking about these emotions, people tell you, but I mean, I never had that. For me, I always heard 
math, no emotion, be rational. And, mm. uh, and that, I think, is something on which we should work much more. Okay. I, I see Yael nodding furiously. Oh, yeah. sorry. I just, oh, is my mic? Oh, it's on. Uh, I just want to say I completely agree. I want to actually to touch on Bob's point, which I completely agree with, that the problem people hate, well, there's many reasons. One of them is actually because of the fear. And now you can ask, why? Why is there a fear? Why is there a fear of math and not of other subjects? And I think actually this is a bit of a society society problem, which is somehow math is equated with being smart. I mean, I'm very lucky that that was the case, but it's really, I don't understand why. You know, people who are gifted in music, I, for example, am pretty tone deaf. I have no, you know, gift to say the least for music. I don't hate it. I actually love it. I love to see the passion in musicians and how they play. I, my son uh, studied music for many years and I love watching it. You know why? Because I'm not being judged the fact that I can produce music. And I do think that people who are not good at math, whatever that means, they're not interested, whatever it is, they're considered, the society considers them as not as smart as the one, as the people who are. I think that's a big, big problem and that's what causes a lot of the uh, fear, which, in, which is then interpreted as hatred. Mm. That's on this, uh, I think that's a very good point. And when you, when society is pushing on you uh, to feel something about, like, I mean, being, for instance, it's true that learning math is something very difficult in the sense that the notions are very deeply anchored in your mind, so you take time to learn them and so on. And you have this kind of narcissistic uh, uh, hurt when you when when you uh, when you don't uh, manage. And the point is that because society is pushing this vision that you are saying that in some sense it's that you are not born smart enough, there is a natural reaction of the body almost, which is, okay, I'm not going to blame myself, I'm going to blame it, yeah. math. And there is this collective thing that change, like uh, just a blame of maybe not managing as well as we want in math, we just, I mean, people push it, we, I mean, maybe I should not say, well, maybe I push it a little bit also, but I mean, people push it on math itself and it becomes, actually people don't, are not proud of succeeding in math, at least in France, I can speak, they are proud of being bad at math. It's kind mm -hmm. of some kind of proudness of belonging to a large community of people that so it's true, you know, I mean, we understand what you mean, math, that's your fault, not ours. And this is because of what you said, I think. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't fully agree with uh, not using the appli applications of mathematics in mathematics education, because I think that uh, people are different. I, you know, uh, some uh, a child who gets a problem of uh, add uh, 25 to 47, there might be a tricky way of doing it. And he does it in a tricky way. And the other children look at them and uh, what is he doing? I mean, this is, uh, we know how to do that or we learned how to do that. So uh, I think some people have this liking of having complicated, some, some complicated, tricky ideas, and uh, some uh, maybe don't get this. Uh, it, there is still a possibility. I mean, I think many people are interested in how this thing works, how, how so, so certain things that where mathematics is used uh, can be used to motivate those children who would not, would never be interested in, in tricky ideas. Although I must say that I, I'm still surprised that, uh, that for example, puzzle solving, Sudoku and something are very, very popular. Probably many people do it without knowing that they are really doing math. Yeah, I would say that we should not at all uh, talk about uh, the usefulness, but I don't think that's a, the prime uh, I, motor. Uh, that I, but, um, I think you have to eventually get to people liking this kind of uh, way, exact way of thinking. 
speaking from personal experience, I think puzzles and games is one really great way for kids to get into mathematics. And it has to be made clear that what is underlying this is not arithmetic, but it really is mathematics. So somebody, the teacher, the mentor has to make this connection. It provides a nice path in. So I just want to touch on, touch on that, and also based on conversations we had at dinner or lunch, and all what it was with Avi Nednein, uh, that, yeah, I mean, one beyond fear, it just taught very poorly. For some reason, we just learned arithmetic. It's, of course it's not interesting. What's so interesting about arithmetic? We don't actually teach real the beauty of math. I, I actually, I don't understand why. Is it, uh, maybe it's hard, I don't know. Why, uh, there's so much better ways to teach the beauty of math than just doing arithmetic. I have a partial answer to why. Uh, in, in France, at least, I don't know for other countries, and I would be very happy to, to hear it, but in France, for primary school, 90, I mean, no, 70 percent, sorry, I mean, numbers, I mean, who, it's complicated. Uh, 70 percent of the teachers went through, uh, I mean, non-mathematical or non-scientific studies. So you are asking people who hate math, basically, to teach it to your kids, and that's, I mean, the immediately there is a problem. I mean, I don't understand why, and it seems to be pretty universal, why there are not two teachers, you know, one for uh, sciences and one for, uh, for the rest, because just you cannot teach something to a kid. I mean, the, the, the lower you get in age, the more important it is that you are enthusiastic about it. So emotions are an important uh, a process to, to, to get uh, to learning, but mentoring is a second thing that is extremely important. So if the person doesn't like it, there's zero chance that... Uh... It's a really interesting point. Yeah. So shifting just a little bit, um, question for Lazo here. So we learned um, on the first day here, when we learned about the Heidelberg logo, that we have 50% um, women and 50% men here, which, which is fabulous for the young researchers, right? Um, but this isn't consistent with general statistics about how many girls and boys, and men and women, there are um, in mathematics, right? And I know that this was something that you were specifically interested in exploring, the, the gender disparity that there is in mathematics. So do you want to say something about it, introduce that topic here? Uh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, the story is that at the academy, we went through the reasons why uh, there are so many, so fewer female members of the academy. And it turned out that the reasons in mathematics are different from the reasons in, say, the life sciences, or not to speak about humanities, where the, more, the, the main reason was, uh, you know, children or, or uh, other interruptions of the career, but in mathematics, uh, the difference already started in the elementary school. And I, I had this really shocking experience once I was on the, on the committee of the finals for some math uh, competition in the city, and uh, uh, there were 36 participants, one girl. Uh, 36 who made it to the finals. Um, now it's true that this was, uh, this, these were uh, teams of size three, so probably it's more natural that uh, boys form uh, teams of size three, but uh, even so, I, I was really shocked by this. And so I, I, I wanted to find out why is that, and I don't have a good answer to that. Uh, it could have something to do with the education system, which was, of course, developed in order to teach boys. I mean, our education system developed in the last uh, few centuries in order to, to teach boys, and it's not, uh, the, if you look carefully, you can see many elements which are sort of, uh, uh, fine-tuned in that direction. But uh, whether this is a full explanation, I don't know. I think 
<coughs> yeah. Actually, okay. not as a female scientist, but as a mother. So I've seen it, you know, I have a, a son and two girls. And uh, my, oh, my daughter, who's 16 now, when, so when they were young, we gave him kind of math riddles just for fun, you know. And my daughter uh, really, uh, they all liked it, actually. But my daughter, when she, when my son and daughter together, when they were, my daughter then was, I don't know, they were like around 10 and 12. They went first time to an actual math event. So they, we signed them up for this camp, Idea Math. So I took them to the bus. Uh, it was a long drive. I, I looked at, at the people on the bus, and of course my eyes was like, I saw black. Why? Only boys. So my, son, my daughter was the only, maybe there was, I didn't see any, okay? I was just, I just saw boys. Okay, so they both got on the bus, and as soon as they got on the bus, I felt like, poor girl. You know, she, I don't think she knew what the, anyway, they come back from the bus. My daughter, the first thing she tells me is, I hate math and I'm not going back. Now, what struck me is not that she didn't like the, the camp. I wouldn't, I mean, I, that I understood right away when I dropped her off. But what struck me is that her conclusion was that she didn't like math. Not that she didn't like the camp. And it actually took us forever to convince her that actually she, she likes math. And I remember all the time, all our conversations, she's like, I know you're trying. You would like a daughter that likes math, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. I hate math. That was her, you know. And it's funny, only recently, actually, Avi convinced, I mean, I, through Avi, Avi pointed out a new math camp, math camp that I wasn't aware of for uh, high school students that she applied to and did it this summer uh, at the age of 16. She came back a different person, really a different person, so happy. And in that camp, they make an effort, actually a kind of a commitment to have at least 30% female students. And I think that made all the difference for her. So I think, you know, we, what, what draws us to a, to a topic, a place, is the peer. You know, who's with us there? If it's a bunch of people that we don't like, we, we don't want to be there. And if, it, if you look like everyone else or you're interested in other things, or you, it, you just run away. So in that sense, I think that having diversity is crucial. Otherwise, we're losing. We're losing a lot of talent. I have a question about the gender issue, which is, given the situation, would it be a good idea, or is it a good idea, to have single gender schools or classes in these crucial middle years, middle school to high school, or not? Uh, so speaking personally, I had three daughters, all three of them were in uh, mixed elementary school, but they all ended up going to girls' schools. None of them became a mathematician, but they all got advanced degrees, so they succeeded in that environment. So actually, my daughter, after the math camp, the Canada USA math camp that Avi introduced us to, she went to another camp called G2, which was a girl-only camp, and she loved it. So yeah, I do think, I wish, I wasn't aware, I don't know, maybe there exists a lot of them, I wasn't aware, but like for middle school or elementary school, a girl-only uh, kind of, it doesn't mean, it can be, it, again, it can be a, not only girls, but the only boys is a problem. I think a girl-only camp for, for this topic in particular is fan it's fantastic for them, actually. So I, I have a specific question for you, Yael. It's clearly related to this. So I, I read an article about you. You probably are, are going to know where this quote came from. Um, and they quote you as saying, when my parents didn't let me go out, often the only way to get my dad to agree was to tell him, okay, give me a math riddle as hard as you want, but if I solve it, I get to go. And, and you usually got to go. <laughs> is the answer to that. Sometimes so. because I saw, sometimes because I worked so hard, he had pity on me. Yeah. Okay. So, so how did you escape that stereotyping or whatever you're talking about? Were there a lot of girls doing math where you were? Or what so, do you think was your okay. secret? So actually, when I was growing up, contrary to you guys, who I'm very jealous of, I, I had terrible education. I actually, the first time I actually Star, studied math in a formal setting was in college. Uh, my school, my middle school, high school was, I don't know, a bit of a joke. I, I didn't, well, eventually I moved high school the last two years, but I moved high school because I was practically kicked out from my terrible high school. It was, uh, it was really, uh, it, it, there was no, re I, I mean, I just didn't attend high school. I just w was in the beach all day. There was no point in going because you didn't learn anything. And it was, 
Uh, so I, I didn't, I actually didn't get any education. Uh, so I didn't feel, growing up, I didn't feel, I felt isolated from math, but I wasn't aware that all these people had such great <laughs> experiences. So uh, in that sense, you know, I didn't feel any, any gender issue. When I went to the, to the university to do my undergrad in Hebrew University, I was so happy. I, yes, I was in a big minority. I also studied mathematics and there were, you know, I, I know what percent, but a huge percent uh, boys as opposed to girls. But I was so happy to be able to study that I didn't even know, I didn't care. I didn't notice, I didn't care. I, I was just so happy that finally, like I'm studying something interesting that I just sat all day and just studied uh, for, for three years. Uh, so uh, it didn't really affect, I, I wasn't, I, I was so happy that I didn't mind it. And then later, I, I was very lucky to have, to be in most of my career in situations where women, like, where I didn't feel isolated like that. You know, in my PhD, I had Shafi's my advisor, who's a very strong kind of female uh, laureate. Um, and I was lucky enough to have, to be very well grounded. So I personally was very, lucky now i'm i i'm aware of how lucky i was to actually feel kind of never and not only Shafi, all the guys i interacted with i never felt any I, I, like that gender was an issue I, who cares we're doing math here do we discriminate you have blue colors you have brown colors i don't know it just didn't i i didn't notice it and i i'm now aware that i was very lucky not to notice it because i was interacting with people who wasn't an issue for them okay so, so, so one of the things we want to look at eventually in this panel is how to improve um, uh, math instruction in general. But I don't think that what you're saying is a good way. Go, go to a very bad high school and get more people. No, <laughs> no, no, no. That's, uh, that's a, yeah, no. <laughs> that is not a takeaway from here. <laughs> okay. Um, and so Hugo, so basically the same question for you, but I realized that I was so worried about trying to pronounce your name that I didn't mention, I don't think I mentioned that you were a 2022 Fields Medalist, so I wanted to make sure to get that in there. Just, <laughs> in case I don't know. Anyway, so sorry about the name there. Um, but I haven't let you jump in here, so basically the same question for you um, in terms of, well, we're looking at instruction for girls and boys. Do you see um, any ways of improving it to get girls maybe more interested from the beginning? I, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the, the only thing where I can, you know, say something maybe not completely relevant related to me, is that for me, math uh, became uh, something obvious very late, like one year before end of high school. Basically, before that, I didn't want to be a mathematician. I wanted it to be a handball uh, player, which when I see my body right now, I'm, I'm happy I didn't do that. But, um, but so, so my point is that um, it's, I think that it's not necessary, we should not also rush into, uh, in, into pushing people into math because that can be scary for a kid. And it, as soon as it's scary, you put the kid in front of stereotypes, right? I mean, it's going to be more sensitive to stereotypes. Exactly what happened with your daughter is that she was good at math. She was succeeding if she went to this mass, uh, first mass uh, event, I guess she was very good at math. And, and then she faces this stereotype of all these boys. So, you know, maybe I don't belong. And, and so in my case, for instance, I think it was very useful not to be pushed toward math but just to be pushed to learn and to uh, discover things. And uh, maybe, maybe if we, we, we kind of provide this very wide uh, learning and maybe not a decision to actually turn into mass too early, then that can be very useful. For instance, something catastrophic that happened in France is that math became an option, so it became something that you actively have to choose. And then the number of women dropped drastically so 20 years of pro of slow progress in increasing the number of women in scientific studies in math in two years completely collapsed because in some sense you ask people to make a choice you know do you like math in some sense if you do it too early mm -hmm. i feel that right now with the stereotypes that surround math you are probably losing more uh, women because they will actually answer the stereotype by thinking okay it's not for me Okay, so 
Bob, let me uh, ask you a related question. Um, since you really straddle both mathematics and computer science regularly, um, do you see any synergy between the teaching of the two? Or are you doing really strictly CS education? Or is there some way of leveraging one to help the other? Well, I see myself as definitely on the boundary because what I do is theoretical computer science, which requires plenty of mathematics. Um, uh, I always tell my students, the more mathematics, the better, if you want to be a computer scientist. Uh, this doesn't necessarily answer your question. Um, I, I think back to this question of how do we get, how do we remove the fear, I think we need to, introduce different ways to introduce the material, provide some flexibility in the educational system, get some good mentors, people who don't themselves hate and fear mathematics, introduce new teaching materials. I mean, one way in, it, different people respond to abstraction, puzzles, games, and so on, mm -hmm. and other people respond to uh, applications. It's, this is not an either or situation. We should make it both and somehow. Um, uh, and, and to me, there's no separation between mathematics and computer science. I mean, uh, computer science is one form of mathematics, and certain kinds of mathematics are some form of computer science. So it's all kind of part of the same thing. But coming back to this issue of boys and girls, men and women, I think another challenge we have is computer games because a lot of boys, a lot of computer games are designed to be attractive. It seems to boys shoot them up games and so on. So boys play games, they become proficient at what looks like computers. And I think girls kind of get intimidated. So this is another challenge. We have these societal phenomena that we somehow need to overcome. We need more games for girls. I know this is a passion of Maria Clave, who uh, is now going to be the new head of Math for America. Uh, but we need to do this. You can't uh, uh, push people into things. You need to create opportunities somehow. Uh, no. Did you want to say something? I just want to also say, I, I think the problem in mathematics is not just the lack of women, it's the lack of diversity. It's like all the kids look the same. It's a, it's a very, very non, you know, a, that's, um, it's way beyond the, the issue of women. You go, you're shaking your head, yes. So, so that's something that I tried to argue with Ministry of Education in France. And the answer was uh, absolutely amazing. The person said, yes, but the issue of diversity uh, is actually general, so <laughs> we don't care about it. I mean, you are a mathematician, your problem is what is specific to math, and they identified that in math there is a gender balance problem. And the diversity problem, they said, oh, well, you know, it's in every single, uh, I mean, high education uh, uh, direction, so let's not care about it now. I don't think if it was, I mean, I don't know if it was like, let's start small and try to do bigger, but I mean, they are aware of this, I think, but they don't care so as much as uh, gender balance, which I don't, I cannot explain myself why. But it's even more than that. Even I think among boys, like you go to these math camps, you know, I don't know, it's like the same type of kids. They're all kind of super, you, you have to be a nerd to like math. Is that a prerequisite? I don't understand why. They all look like these kind of very nerdy little kids. <laughs> not you, not you. Okay, let me ask a question that I had down for Yael, but anybody else is free to answer it too. So there's actually an assumption in this question of why do so many people hate math, and particularly looking at the difference in boys and girls. It's not really true that necessarily the boys and girls start disliking math at the same time. Something seems to happen to girls along the way, um, at least from what I've looked at. So do you have any sense of when girls start out um, dropping, what, when they start dropping out of math, what age, and the specific causes of why they're dropping out? Yeah, so I, I think essentially 
I, I that's my, okay. I've, I didn't study it at all. <laughs> yeah, that's just what I see with my kids and so on. At the, at the end of the day, it's which group do you want to belong to? That, for the kids, that's the question they ask. Which group? Do, even now, so now after the camp, my daughter all loves math. She's super excited about it. She started doing competitive math because the girls' camp did competitive math. She's so happy. I told her, join the math team at school. So she went to one meeting, and that was the last one because it's only boys. So it's uh, it's the same thing. It's a, you. It's a matter you drop as soon as you realize you don't you don't want to belong to this group. So I think for girls in particular, again, this is this is a more general topic. But you know, you come, you see that you feel you don't belong, and you leave it. And now the question is how how early it is for you. And I think for different people, the answer is different. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is true for the people that are very good at math, but even for the average people, like why do girls drop out early? I think in, in France there was a study that before I, age six, so before primary school, there is absolutely zero difference between uh, women and uh, I mean girls and boys. So it seems to start at primary school and it's also extremely dependent on the gender of the teacher which is something uh, so uh, so they made these studies and uh, and they see that when the, the the teacher is a woman then the girls perform better in math so there is clearly what what you are saying is true uh, for the group i mean once you start choosing your really your direction you want to belong to a community that looks like you and this i think is is totally true but even before that you kind of the person that teach you the thing is already giving you some information on what's the crowd that can be good at it in some sense. Yeah, That's how role kids mo feel role it. Models. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I have exactly. a question about that because uh, usually in elementary school, teachers are women for all topics. Yeah. So that would kind of suggest that girls actually in elementary school. Uh, in the, I mean, it's a comparison between the two things. There is a drop, whatever the, the gender of the teacher, but the drop is faster if it's a. Uh, if it's, uh, and it's also faster if the head of the, the, like the best person, the best kid is a boy. If the best kid is a girl, then it drags every uh, girl in the, in the class up. Okay. I, I just looked at my watch and I didn't realize it, it, it's almost lunchtime, so we're keeping people from lunch. Um, I did want to end quickly on an optimistic note. Um, I'll, I'll go across the line. Um, same question for everyone. Do you have any suggestions on how to improve the situation, how to get people to stop fearing math, hating math? A anything optimistic that you can say here after this discussion? So I'll start with that. Last one. In my opinion, the education should be much more personalized, uh, directed to the particular student. And from this point of view, it's not really necessarily girls and boys distinction is the important thing, although it correlates with this. Uh, however, this is a very expensive thing to do. So uh, I, I, my experience is that various things, if you meet something exactly in the right time, then you, then you like to do it and it's a success story and so on. Um, uh, just met our little uh, nine-year-old uh, granddaughter and then she came and said, please, uh, uh, Papa, write here uh, 21 digits and then went to my wife and said, write under it 21 digits. And I don't know what was this going. And then she just pulled a line and, and added it up. So, and she was very proud because she could do it and she could show us that she could do it. So there is a, a certain time when, when people, even what we would think, you know, a terrible thing to do, if it's too early, then it's a frustration and it's, it's very negative. If it's too late, then it's boring. If it's exactly in the right time. But the right time is not the same time for the 30 people, 30 students in the class. And that's why uh, I don't really see uh, come a, a solution until, until there will be enough teachers, smaller classes, so that the teachers can adjust the, the material to the actual need of the students. So yeah. I, I have a cheaper solution. Uh, okay, so I can say in the crypto group at MIT, we have a majority of female students. 
Okay, why is that? It's very surprising. My guess is because uh, you know the one of the faculty, one of the two faculty members there is a female. They just you know, like we say, we wanna we're looking for people like us. So my solution, I see a lot of you know women here in the audience. You should be role models, and that's how I think the change will happen. As soon as there are more role models in mathematics and computer science, the rest will follow. So I, I saw in my own eyes, you know, there was. Almost zero at MIT, now half. It's, it's uh, you know, I left it my, the other, my colleague Vinod, who's also at MIT, and sometimes I'm like, I'm so, it's probably very hard to be in such minority. You know, if you need support, let us know. You know? <laughs> so I think if you'll join, that will be a huge help. Yes, I'll just follow up on what Yale said and bring it to the people in the room. Uh, I know, I think it's very important to be aware of the issue in the first place, and if you're teaching or mentoring, uh, do what you can. I mean, you all have great opportunities. It's up to you, the future generation, to try to improve things. So on that note, perhaps it's lunchtime. <laughs> well, well, Hugo hasn't gotten to say anything. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, on the education, I, uh, maybe just one additional thing, and then I would have a very cheap answer to the question uh, why so many people hate math. Uh, but uh, I mean, about the, I mean, being, as you said, personalized in the teaching is, I think, indeed a very important thing. And one way to implement fairly easily this actually is to make group work. If, I mean, actually, our experience of math is very different from what people believe is the experience of math. I mean, we all collaborate, we all work with others. I think there are very few of our papers that would have been uh, published if there was not another person to tell us, oh, here, you know, uh, what do you mean? Or uh, did you try this? Or blah, blah. So even with kids, I think this works would be much, uh, I mean, working in groups is very useful because then kids have this ability, actually they have a lot of empathy so they have this ability to, you know, try to explain to people, to, to the other kids how it works. So that's maybe one way that I don't see so much in education is a group uh, thing. You know, there are many other sciences where it's clear that you are going to do things by group, but I mean, in math, it's not that clear. Now, as a cheap answer, I mean, you are going to hate me for that, but why how many people hate mathematics? I mean, because there are many people. I mean, at the end, mathematics is not so hated. You know that in France, in middle school, mathematics is the second most loved like, uh, thing after sport. Hmm. Who can compete with sport? I love sport more than <laughs> mathematics. So, so, so my point is that actually people have a misconception on how many people hate math. 30% of kids in France rank math as their favorite thing. 40% of people love, love soccer in France. And I can tell you that if you, you ask somebody, you know, I mean, are people uh, enjoying you know, soccer? They will all tell you, yes, obviously, everybody loves soccer. But everybody, love, uh, everybody, everybody hates math when you, you ask so, so what are you doing in France that's different than other places in the world? Sorry. What are you doing in France that people like it so much uh, compared to other places in the world? Well, I think that the same percentage is everywhere. I think just people believe that people hate math because it's antagonizing. So you hear a lot the voice of people who hate it. But you have many people who like math, period. That's many people get very good. <laughs> Sorry. Fake news. <laughs> you think I could become president? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no. so I think actually there is a misconception there. That we, I mean, and, and we believe we are always defensive, right? When, when people ask us this, we are like, oh, no, 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 I mean, why do people hate math? No, I mean, oh, they should not. But I mean, actually they don't, most of the time they don't. It's a minority of people who truly hate math. Okay, that, that, that was a very optimistic ending. <laughs> okay, we should leave it there, right? All right, thank you very much. Thank you to the whole panel for doing this. <laughs>